In pregnancy, small changes can have big consequences. In this lecture, we will explore early pregnancy complications, diagnosis, sonographic findings and management, giving you the tools to recognize, interpret and manage these critical cases with confidence. By the end of this uh, session, you'll be able to spot the key features of early pregnancy complications, recognize the ultrasound findings of an embryonic pregnancy, different types of miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, and molar pregnancy, uh, and most importantly, uh, understand the clinical context so you can choose the right management approach. Let's start with an embryonic pregnancy. This is when the gestational sac develops, but no embryo forms. On ultrasound, you will typically see a large sac, more than 25 millimeters, without a yolk sac or an embryonic pool, and a thin trophoplastic ring. Clinically, this means the pregnancy is non-viable. Management options include expectant care, medical treatment, or surgical intervention, and the, cho the choice depends on the patient's clinical situation and preferences. Not all pregnancy bleeding means a loss. Threatened miscarriage is when there is vaginal bleeding, but the pregnancy is still viable. On ultrasound, you'll see normal heart activity, normal fetal heart activity, and sometimes a subchorionic hemorrhage. The good news, in most cases, the bleeding settles and uh, the pregnancy continues, uh, but close monitoring is important because some cases may progress to miscarriage. Sometimes the loss has already occurred, but there are no obvious symptoms. This is called a mis miscarriage, when a non viable embryo or fetus is retained without signs uh, like bleeding or pain. On ultrasound, uh, look for a crown rhomb length over 7 mm with no cortic activity or an irregular collapse of gestational sac. Management options include expectant care, medical treatment, or surgical evacuation guided by the patient's condition and preference. We have incomplete abortion when uh, part of the pregnancy tissue is expelled before 20 to 24 weeks but some remains inside the uterus. This retained tissue can cause ongoing bleeding and, uh, if untreated, may lead to infection. On ultrasound, you may see echogenic material within the endometrial cavity, sometimes with irregular gestational sac remnants. Using uh, Doppler uh, vascularity within the uh, tissue helps distinguish it from a simple blood clot, and importantly, there's uh, no viable intrauterine pregnancy. Let's move on to ectopic pregnancy when the embryo implants outside the uterine cavity. The most common site is the fallopian tube, but it can also occur in the cervix, the interstitial portion of the tube, uh, the ovary, and uh, uh, even uh, the abdominal cavity. Risk factors include a prior ectopic pregnancy, previous tubal surgery, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, and the use of an intrauterine device. On ultrasound, the tubal ectopic pregnancy often shows an empty uh, uterus along with an intellectual mass. Color Doppler uh, may reveal the classic ring of fire, increased vascularity surrounding the uh, ectopic sac. Remember the absence of an intrauterine pregnancy uh, in the setting of a post pregnancy test uh, should always raise suspicion for ectopic pregnancy. Look closely at the uh, mesagenal uh, scan of the uh, transvaginal scan of the uh, uterus. You can see a thickened decidual but not gestational sac inside the uterus. When you have this absence, despite a clear uh, decidual reaction, think of three possibilities uh, very early intrauterine pregnancy, an uh, early pregnancy loss, or an ectopic uh, pregnancy. Uh, and remember, always uh, check the beta HD levels and uh, plan uh, follow-up imaging before making the call. 
Now, uh, take a look at this transvaginal ultrasound. Here we see a corpus luteus cyst within the ovary, right next to ecogenic thick chorionic tissue. At first glance, this can uh, mimic an adenexal gestation sac or mass, which is why careful assessment is key. Uh, look at the wall and the internal echoes. A corpus luteum uh, often has a thicker uh, wall and less defined internal content compared to an ectopic sac. Uh, color Doppler and serial uh, beta SUG levels are uh, your friends here, uh, helping you uh, tell the difference between a benign ovarian finding and a true ectopic pregnancy. Let's look at the Doppler image from the same adenexal region. Notice the ring of fire pattern, but here's the catch. It surrounds both the corpus luteal cyst and the adjacent ecogenic chorionic shell. That's an important teaching point. This vascular ring can appear in both structures, so it's not enough on its own to call an ectopic pregnancy. What clinches the diagnosis here is the central vascular uh, flow right at the site of the tiny embryonic pool, confirming this is an ectopic gestation. Always combine grayscale, Doppler, and clinical correlation before making the final call for an ectopic pregnancy. Here's a focused power Doppler view of the tubal gestational sac. Watch closely after optimizing the Doppler settings. We can now pick in uh, isolated embryonic cortic pulsations. Notice how the surrounding trophoblastic flow disappears. That's the effect uh, of adjacent uh, Doppler sensitivity to selective highlighted uh, fetal cortic activity. This focused approach is crucial for uh, confirming ectopic variability and making the timely management decisions. Now here is a zoomed in view of the tubal gestation sac. By using magnification, we can clearly make out the finer details uh, like the yolk sac and the tiny embryonic pool. In ectopic pregnancy, these structures can be very small and easy to miss, so proper zoom and meticulous image optimization are absolutely essential. Always take the time to magnify a suspicious uh, area. It can be the difference between spotting an ectopic early and uh, missing it altogether. Here we have a positive Doppler trace with the sample gate placed precisely over the embryonic pool. You can see a regular heart rate, 124 beats per minute, uh, right in the normal range for the uh, early gestation. Detecting embryonic cardiac activity confirms viability and uh, gives us important diagnostic uh, information, especially in ectopic pregnancies. Uh, but remember, when using Doppler in early pregnancy, keep your exposure time short and your settings optimized to minimize development by effects while still getting an accurate cardiac assessment. Here is a 3D volume rendered transvaginal scan using power Doppler displayed in a uh, glass body mode. Look how this uh, mode enhances spatial visualization. You can really appreciate the relationship of early pregnancy structures in uh, plane A uh, and C. You will spot a well-defined double decidual uh, sign and a thick uh, echogenic a chorionic shell surrounding the yolk sac with peritrophoblastic vascular flow or wrapping uh, around it. Uh, tips for trainees, 3D uh, glass body mode isn't just uh, pretty imaging, it's a powerful tool for confirming structural relationships and differentiating between intrauterine and ectopic uh, gestations. In this reconstructed 3D volume, you can clearly see a tiny embryo attached to uh, the yolk sac, a vivid snapshot of early embryonic development and how implantation occurred. Uh, glass body mode gives us uh, that extra layer of anatomical context, which can be especially valuable when uh, 2D imaging alone doesn't provide the full picture. 
always remember when uh, standard views leave you uncertain 3d can be the key to unlocking these uh, fine uh, details Here is a 3D volume scan using uh, virtual contrast imaging on plane C, uh, VCIC. Um, look closely, uh, you can see the corpus luteal cyst within the ovarian uh, tissue uh, right uh, next to the gestational sac. The three dimensional view clearly outlines their spatial relationship, showing just how close the corpus luteum sits to the, uh, to the developing uh, pregnancy. This is a great example of how 3D imaging can help distinguish a normal corpus luteum from other adenexal masses, ensuring you don't mistake a normal early finding for uh, a pathology. Now let's uh, look at a cervical ectopic uh, pregnancy. On this uh, two plane transvaginal scan, you can see the uterine cavity is empty and the internal os is closed, giving the uterus that uh, classic hourglass shape. Uh, look carefully, the gestation sac is sitting uh, lower, uh, right within the cervical canal. Recognizing uh, this uh, location early in is critical because cervical ectopic carry a high risk of severe bleeding if uh, not managed promptly. Uh, this 3D coronal uh, view confirms the diagnosis. Uh, the endometrial uh, cavity is completely empty, the fundal strap, uh, stripe is uh, intact, and the cervix is distended, uh, containing the gestational sac. Uh, there are classic features of uh, cervical implantation, and 3D uh, imaging makes them crystal clear for both diagnosis and uh, teaching. Here is a focused view of the closed internal os, a key diagnostic uh, clue in cervical uh, ectopic pregnancy. Uh, notice how it remains shut uh, even uh, though the cervical uh, canal is distended by the gestational sac. This uh, finding helps you distinguish a true cervical implantation from an inevitable miscarriage or a low-lying intrauterine uh, pregnancy, uh, where the os is uh, typically up. In this 2D and 3D volume image, uh, there is a pulsing cervical canal distended by the gestational sac, uh, a hallmark finding supporting uh, cervical implantation. Finally, here we can see the cervical canal itself clearly containing a gestational sac and inside it a visible embryo. This confirms a cervical ectopic pregnancy with implantation taking place entirely below the closed internal os. This, uh, that's uh, the critical uh, distinction from a low-lying intrauterine uh, pregnancy or an uh, one in process of uh, miscarriage. Now let's move uh, to molar pregnancy and abnormal proliferation of trophoblastic tissue. There are two main types, complete moles, which have no fetus, and partial moles, which include an abnormal fetus. On ultrasound, a complete mole gives you that classic snowstorm appearance, while a partial mole may show cystic spaces within the placenta. Bilateral thecal lutein cysts are often associated, uh, clinically expected, uh, very high uh, SUG levels and always remember the risk of a persistent gestational trophoblastic disease, invasive mole, or even chorioquine stroma. Uh, so, uh, close follow up is uh, essential. Here's the TOI uh, tomographic ultrasound imaging of a complete mole pregnancy across nine sequential planes. You can see the classic snowstorm appearance, the uterus is markedly enlarged, and the endometrial cavity is completely replaced by heterogeneous echogenic tissue. 
Look carefully, you can clearly uh, make out the plane of cleavage between the myometrium and the molar tissue. Uh, spotting that interface is an important clue in confirming the diagnosis. Here we have a multiplanar reconstruction of a complete molar pregnancy showing the lesion in three orthogonal planes along solid A3D volume rendering. The snowstorm appearance is unmistakable and there is no gestation sac or embryo present. The 3D volume confirms that the uterine cavity is expanded and filled with echogenic cystic tissue. The classic appearance of a complete uh, hydatid form uh, mole. Here is a second uh, trimester portion more pregnancy at 18 weeks. Notice the enlarged multicystic placenta with these characteristic vesicular changes. We can also uh, see oligohydramnios and a compressed fetal thorax, signs of uh, placental dysfunction and fetal compromise. The key distinction from a complete mole is right. Uh, here, the presence of a fetus, often with uh, anomalies alongside the abnormal uh, placenta. Here is a surface rendered 3D image of a partial uh, mole. The same case uh, we showed before. You can clearly see the fetal face and the compressed thorax sitting right next to a markedly cystic enlarged placenta. This detailed rendering really drives uh, home uh, uh, the hallmark of a portrait mold, the striking just uh, position uh, between ongoing fetal development and abnormal placentation. Let's finish with a quick diagnostic algorithm recap. An embryonic pregnancy, a think large gestation sac with no embryo. Missed miscarriage, crown rump length over 7 millimeters, but no cardiac heartbeat. Ectopic pregnancy, there is empty uterus paired with an adenexal mass. And more pregnancy, the classic snowstorm appearance on ultrasound with markedly elevated SGG levels. Keep these uh, patterns in mind and you will have the major early pregnancy complication at your fingertips. When it, come, when it comes to management, the approach uh, should always be tailored to the diagnosis, the patient uh, preferences, and their clinical stability. Expected management means uh, careful observation, allowing uh, natural resolution. Medical options include uh, mesotrexate for ectopic pregnancy or mesoprostol for retained uh, products of conception. Uh, surgical uh, management uh, should be a dilatation and curettage for a molar pregnancy or missed miscarriage or uh, laparoscopy for an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, the key is matching the right uh, treatment to the right patient at the right time. To wrap up, uh, early recognition uh, of uh, Pregnancy complications can make all the difference in outcomes. Ultrasound uh, remains the cornerstone of diagnosis, guiding us from uh, suspicion to confirmation. And finally, every case deserves an individualized management plan, uh, balancing the diagnosis, the patient's clinical picture, and their personal preferences. Uh, master these principles and you'll be ready to approach early pregnancy complications with both skills and confidence. That brings us to the end of our session. Now uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, what has uh, been your biggest challenge when diagnosing early pregnancy complications? Uh, let's discuss uh, it in the comments below. If you find this uh, session valuable, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can uh, miss out uh, our upcoming fetal medicine lectures. 
uh, your engagement helps us keep uh, delivering high quality evidence based teaching and it's the best uh, way uh, to grow uh, together as a community of ultrasound professors.